actually just give me one second um, <laughs> i just went live okay but no do worries. your thing do your thing i'll 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 uh i'll entertain the guests what's up everybody scale my uh resolution real quick yeah do your thing what's up everybody uh hope everyone's having a good sunday um i'm here with kirill who just dropped a class uh actually just last uh tuesday heart surface modeling so a great course for anyone looking to get started in 3d modeling without having to uh break their head over um topology and all that stuff it's it's like the smooth way in to uh 3d modeling and cgi but anyhow uh as per usual uh you know how are you guys doing How's the audio? Is everything working? And then we can get in. And in the meantime, um, while you guys answer, I'll play the trailer to Kirill's new course. Did you want to say something, Kirill? I was going to say I need to log off and log on, but not restart, just log off and log on. But, yeah, do, you, uh, do your thing. I'm here in the meantime. Uh, okay, all right. So just, just hit me up on Skype and I'll, I'll yep, yep. call you again. All right. Um, yeah so okay thank you sound is working everything's good perfect um so i'm going to play kirill's trailer in the background um but yeah this is this is super awesome it's a it's a great course and like i was saying it's a great um it's a really powerful tool fusion is a really powerful tool and the great thing about it is as great as it is, you do not need to purchase it. If you are... Just one second. I have you on. All right. I was just saying, if you are um, basically uh, a hobbyist, all you need to do is get onto the Fusion website and, and uh, basically uh, register. And that'll give you access to a free version of the of the software as well as any update that comes out which is pretty awesome and um if we go through the gallery there's already been uh, a couple students that uploaded uh, their homework here is andreas uh, who did an amazing job <clears throat> um because i believe we'll have andreas at, towards the end of the stream uh on with us and he'll have his homework reviewed uh, by kirill uh, but I believe Andreas is a fashion designer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and 3D is something he, he does on the side, but he'll give you, I might be putting words in his mouth. He'll, he'll give you more, uh, details about that, but still he did a great job. Like it, it looks really, really good. Um, and, and having like coming from Modo and, and sort of having started, to learn 3D, uh, sort of following uh, Von Ling's, aka Heavy Poly, and uh, Tor Freak's workflow, which is pretty much a Boolean workflow um, in Modo. Fusion is such a great um, sort of answer to, to that workflow because it's exactly the same process, but you don't have to go through the hassle of having to fix your mesh every time you do a Boolean cut that goes a wall pretty much um so so yeah this is this is andrea's work we'll go through it toward the end of the stream and um let's just check in with kirill kirill you're good to go yeah, yeah i'm good to go okay so we'll share kirill's screen and uh let's do this boom all right so you're i've just shared your screen um okay i'm having some like background noise but i think that's from i don't know if i should just mute skype or not um andreas perhaps perhaps i think your your mic is on perhaps just mute your mic if you can <clears throat> yeah sure yeah and that should that might take care of it mm -hmm. Audio is fine okay. on my end, though. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, it's it's better now. Okay, cool. Um, so, I'm just going to take over for the next 
45 minutes, I guess, or so. Yeah. Um, and uh, the plan is, um, like, I was looking, searching um, for something to model yesterday, and uh, because this, I mean, we're talking about Fusion 360 on the course, so this stream is still about uh, Fusion 360 uh, more more than anything. Um, and uh, the plan was to do this uh, biped. I, um, the it's called Cassie. I think it was done in Caltech. And um, I don't necessarily want to do like exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just taking the idea. Um, like I saved a couple of images to better understand uh, the structure. Okay. So I'm just gonna like for example like for these joints and stuff. But I'm I'm just gonna do like. Um, well, today we're probably gonna finish a leg or something. Okay. And I'm gonna span this over the course of either two or three streams, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how fast we can detail this out, and then maybe um, render it out on Keyshot. So, plus at the end of the stream, we'll talk with Andreas about his homework. Uh, but yeah, this is. Uh, what I want to do. So, whoever is um, watching this, uh, this is a good example of how I usually work, or like my usual workflow, and also, of course, the workflow that is presented in the course. The only thing is, um, in the course, I go a lot more detailed about with like reasoning and and like doing the pain overs and stuff. I'll do like a quick paint over right now because uh, it doesn't hurt to see. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm just not going to go as detailed. Uh, we'll see if my, yeah, my way comics um, here. Okay, so the point of the paint overs, as always, is just to better understand what's going on. Um, and uh, in my course, um, when students are doing paint overs, um, I was looking at some of the homework already, and I was like, even though if you're painting over and uh, you're not doing it, let's say, right, like you're not calling out the right tools, mm -hmm. essentially, essentially it doesn't matter because the point is that uh, you you're still thinking about the tools you're still like you're just making all the same mistakes as you would be making in fusion but you're doing that in photoshop like beforehand okay which which is a good thing uh because once you it doesn't matter if you made the call wrong like once you go into fusion you'll realize that um like maybe it's a different tool you need to be using or something different instrument but but you still did the work your, your brain uh, was still doing the thing, you know. So, gotcha. uh, so what we're gonna do is, um, I'm just making like a, making it clear uh, what what's gonna happen. So, we're 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 gonna do this leg. I'm not sold on the feet here, so I might. I'm pretty sure I'm going to change that. Okay. Just a quick um, question. In, in Fusion, can you, uh, is it possible to work with instances? Like when you build one leg, can you sort of instance it to have the other one? Or do you actually have to have another, like, do you have to have actually actual geometry? Uh, no instancing, okay. uh, as well as no active geometry mm. uh sorry no active symmetry okay um so uh you just have to go about it the way you would do in real life mm -hmm. and and like everything about fusion i like to say that just forget about poly modeling yeah and, and and treat this as a piece of metal so like can you have instancing in real life uh like you can probably be super smart about it and set up like a kuka robot hand to mimic your actions and shit like that. Yeah. But in, in reality, you just still have to assemble everything piece by piece. Yeah. 
Um, so what I'm interested, but yeah, so like no, no active symmetry, no, no, nothing. I'm just going to build one leg and then, uh, so this would be like, uh, one. And then I, I really like the way it covers the joint here or whatever the servo motors probably. Yeah. So this is part two. I like the shape. And this, we'll, we'll see, because um, this is not exactly Cassie. This is like maybe a prototype or something. Mm -hmm. This is three, and then like this would be like a leg near at four. Uh, but uh, um, I, I like the, the other images that are slightly different. So. Like from from the front, it looks a lot more interesting, and it's, it's just probably like different material. The point is, I just want to build like just one part for now. Um, so what I'm interested in here is this joint right here. Yeah. And uh, it's it's pretty much like the thing that's visible on the leg, and the rest can be. Uh, a cover, mm -hmm. um, e even even if it's even if it's just a tube, they still, as you can see in the example here, they still have the uh, the covers here, just to like for various reasons, just to make it uh, like a product, right? Yeah. So this this is a good example of where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm only trying to do mechanical joints that are going to be visible here. In the like in the, the sort of hip. hip, yeah, yeah, and that's it. And the rest is just going to be simple shapes, yeah, with with some boolean work. And then another uh, detailed part is possibly like in the top, but that's about it. Um, so that's why I'm looking at this joint. So I'm just going to do a quick breakdown of how like we want to approach it. We can see that it's like physically consists of two parts this is uh it's almost like a it's literally like a bone uh the way the rotula like the knee and the the sort of thigh, thigh uh bones uh -huh. the way they're joint it's literally yeah. the same thing yeah yeah it's uh biomimicry is very um i like it, it's very hip right now okay no 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 pun intended <laughs> um but um a anything that resembles like biomimicry for people who don't know is like when technology mimics uh nature and um <clears throat> it's like down to not even working with metal but like replacing mechanical parts with more flexible things and making it as close as possible to the actual uh, uh, <clears throat> like phenomenon in nature. Mm -hmm. um, so we have two, th two parts in the joint, the upper one and, and the lower one. And um, I'm like, the way I'm looking at it is I'm trying to identify the basic shape here. So it's going to be one cylinder here one cylinder here and then perpendicular cylinders yeah um and then a one um rectangle that connects them and these are the pivot points mm -hmm. um, and this is a pivot point here oh that's probably not a pivot point but like it's a pivot point like for the for the smaller bone here yeah um so like this is another joint we're interested in because it's going to be exposed um so this this uh, is a pivot point just for this part right here yeah um so that's fairly straightforward uh i can always save this and add to fusion and that's what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. uh and we'll see if we like when we get down to this we'll do another oops we'll do another break now so i'm just gonna save the image when looking at the the 
you know the the reference image that you have here you would think that this should be fairly easy to do because the shapes are simple and and if you break it down there's a lot of uh cylinders like facing different axes mm -hmm. um yep. but but with your experience when looking at it do you like for a beginner is this something easy to do or do it, it'd be it'd be a little challenging i think it's fairly easy to get the concept mm -hmm. but then it's up to you how detailed you want it and that's where be. the challenge comes right i, I guess yeah because like this might like this in particular right here mm. might might look like a more challenging shape because of how it like changes here yeah. but i'm i'm not um the point of this exercise for me is definitely not trying to do like or see see this shape this is a, a cool one mm -hmm. uh with like all the interesting chamfers and and fillets in there and how things are cutting in yeah like in the profile it's it m might be something like like that and then something like this okay. so it's it's a more challenging shape so you can always find you know challenging shapes and designs i was going to say my point is um i'm just taking this as basics like as the base for constructing the same type of biped mm -hmm. um I, I i don't have to follow the, it yeah like i don't have to follow it exactly i'd rather like come up with some of my own yeah is uh that's that's where the value comes in like your design and stuff so uh infusion uh since it's not the course we're just i'm not going to explain any um thing in terms of ui much like just as i go but uh, you do get to see the, the general workflow so we just go and insert a canvas so that we just visually don't have to switch between um fusion and photoshop yeah exactly um and uh we're gonna uh, it doesn't even matter where we place this it's just gonna be like for me it's gonna be somewhere on the side so i can kind of look at it and it, it's gonna remind me what's happening mm -hmm. um let's say display through canvas opacity you can change that it's it's very convenient if you're working with um proportions and, and scale and everything so uh, in, in our case it doesn't matter yeah because you um, would basically load in the blueprint with the exact measurements and and sort mm -hmm. of overlay uh, your your like your your shapes on top of it right yeah exactly exactly yeah. Um, okay so let's get into it so since we already identified the basic shapes are cylinders we're gonna um i'm not very sold on the scale here so we'll, we'll see if we can scale everything down later okay um basically as long as you uh no let's start with a different uh face as long as you uh maintain the proportions more or less Mm -hmm. or you're, you're good so we have one cylinder like this we have actually they are roughly the same shape so i'm just going to take this one Control c Control v rotate it put it in place so at this point like i i already kind of understand what's happening mm -hmm. so i'm not going to look at the reference much even for the purpose of just not like unintentionally copying something yeah um but like people who have never seen this can be like oh that, is that it just two cylinders <laughs> that's so easy and then uh, i'm gonna show you where the actual like the magic is gonna happen in uh five four it's like a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> uh, so like this instantly gives us 
and what what happened like, we're gonna have to watch a replay <laughs> of this what happened is is i merged two cylinders before i do that you can see that like it's two it's separate two shapes. parts yeah um and uh it's something you're not going to get in polygon modeling um basically i'm just combined this is a boolean operation so it's three basic boolean operations like join cut intersect um so what we're doing is saying let's join this with this say okay uh what happened is it merged two bodies into one mm -hmm. and uh, at the same time it gave us this new new edge to work with uh that we didn't have before and that edge which is gonna go ahead and add a fillet it's just Normally, when you add a fillet, people think about fillets as like, oh, this is just going to be like this. Like yeah, like thing. rounded edge type of thing. And and, and this uh, usually is what I see in student work mm -hmm. a lot, where they connect parts and just do this little fillet. Mm -hmm. In reality, though, uh, like having this is a lot cooler. You just like blow out that fillet, and now it looks like these two parts were kind of like molded. It gives it. It also breaks it away from the industrial uh, sort of shape. Like it, it gives it a more organic look as well. Definitely, uh, and also like it's worth noticing that noting that really things depend on how big or how small things are. Um, like, see, like I cannot take this past a certain shape. Mm. Um, so now it's it's where i don't have to think about topology but i do have to think about design here yeah um and that's so we, we start thinking about design very quickly uh i'm i'm kind of like good with this one um this uh, so this is going to be our part shapes get a little bit more attention than usual mm -hmm. uh, normally if we're working like on a joint that's uh, we, like we're, we're barely gonna see there's absolutely no point in uh, adding all the details in there it just makes everything more complicated um, okay so we have like the top part um, well, the bottom part is going to be almost identical, so there's no point in not taking advantage of that. Just copy, paste, and uh, it's going to be like this. And and the only thing different is that this part had another uh, cylinder in it like another cylinder in there. So we're gonna edit here. And maybe sometimes it's good to exaggerate too. Like we don't have to stick to proportion here. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna ask everything, like basically anytime you're building something, everything is, is sort of snapping to the grid that you, that, you know, the world grid in a way. And not only like the, this is the world grid that's in three quarters right now, and I like to work in three quarters mm -hmm. as you can see, like in slightly ISO. Yeah. Uh, which actually, like, you can switch to perspective as well. But um, once you start placing stuff, like 
it it kind of like gives oh, you oh it aligns more it, it, okay it automatically aligns the 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 world axis onto the plane that's highlighted yeah it's if see if like if you if i rotate i don't see that effect yeah but um it's just it's basically telling me like what plane i'm working on yeah um see like even if it's a slanted plane it's yeah. it's also at an angle yeah and then once i select the face to work from and and click because it's already has like almost the full radius mm -hmm. there, like no matter how small that radius is even if it's sectional uh it, it can tell me what the center is that's pretty so, amazing like so i don't have to guess uh, and th that's something you don't get um in other software yeah in moto it's something you need to sort of switch on or off and and you need to select whether you want to do it to an edge to to a plane or to to an mm -hmm. object like uh, it's not it's not automated in the same way but it's it's a super strong feature super powerful yeah i feel like it's uh it, it it's beneficial for like making everything more accurate mm -mm -mm. so we're just gonna exaggerate this a little bit this this guy for some reason gets like 12 screws all around uh and then like even around this we get a lot of like several so what we're gonna do is still exaggerate this a little more apparently this is not as um uh, wide um it's a good time to show radial symmetry what we need to do to place that we're gonna do the bosses first i think mm -hmm. uh like it's good to have a boss um that basically a boss is like a thing that helps structural integrity uh and we're gonna place them around first well we're gonna do it together with this crew but as i'm cutting i don't want to cut into the body so i'm gonna select here and uh choose what body not to cut in this case it's body three that we don't have to cut so it's only cutting this okay um and then uh, i'm gonna create like a head of a screw that's also gonna be populated there not gonna join anything um and then oh it's apparently it, the the scale is too small it's not letting me chamfer at such a small scale oh see like no matter like it looks big but it's only 0.1 millimeter so uh that's actually sometimes good like it's a good limitation to remind yourself about mm -hmm. uh like keep it in there um so you like this means i won't go super tiny details on on such a thing yeah um so we're gonna do like uh hex screws are pretty popular in mechanics because of the uh, applied torque uh, that needs to be like certain uh number mm -hmm. so instead of like a phillips head or whatever that's why like phillips looks ridiculous on mechanical engineering that's like you know a hundred thousand pounds and you see like a phillips uh, screw in there um we're gonna use the so, inscribe uh -huh. so basically phillips phillips screw ha have less uh uh what's happening is can like, can sort of yeah go ahead I'm, I'm just gonna explain so this is a template for not a hex but like a uh oh no it's a hex yeah hexagonal and then a phillips screw would look like this yeah. right um this rectangle i'm gonna make it a slightly different color so it's visible um 
the, the blue rectangle, the Phillips screw, um, only has four points. Yeah. And what, when a lot of torque is applied, uh, all the torque is divided between four corners. Mm. And it's uh, kind of like, it, it has different values versus when torque is divided between six. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's something that like you don't have to think about as a concept artist. It's just good to know that like certain elements need certain parts to make it more believable. Okay. Um, okay, so we have this. And we're just going to populate it around using circular symmetry. Um, do the bodies. We will take this body and that body. And the axis will be this. And we need maybe like eight. And we don't need it here. That perfect is pretty example. awesome. Yeah, it's a perfect example uh, of like all the features that are there. And then another pull in operation of merging stuff together. Six, uh, six seven. Uh, join them, and because we just joined them, we have this common edge now, and we're just going to select uh, this one. I had missed one joining this, this, um, and this one I missed. Okay, um, I'm just going to remember the value. Yeah. So. Let's see if this works. Okay, so just let's say it's going to be just one millimeter. Um, we're going to do it again because I didn't join these two. And uh, apply it here. Fill it. Fill it. Also, one. Sometimes um, a certain like topology will prevent you from adding the same fillet, so you can slightly make like make slight adjustments. So, it, it, like interesting note is like everything here right now is like millimeters. You can see if we take the measure tool, even the radius is like just four millimeters. Mm -hmm. This is incredibly tiny. So that's the reason why things can only go like that far no. it's only like allowing you that much i mean you can change the settings and stuff but just think about it like this is work like level of creating jewelry it's it's extremely tiny so for manufacturing it's something to keep in mind like you don't want to work that small mm -hmm. <clears throat> um let's do the same thing here just uh, a lot simpler and actually slightly different way. And I'm, I was, I'm also going to show that not only you can pattern existing bodies, you can pattern sort of bodies that are not there. Um, we're going to take this, make a cut right away, and then we're going to pattern the cut, which is something people don't realize is possible. We'll take, going to take face, like this face, and pattern on this axis, uh, let's say, five times. So it patterns the cut. And then we're going to fill it up. Sure. And like, yeah. I was just going to ask, when did you discover, uh, like, fusion? Um... I don't know, like uh, three, four years ago, the, exactly when it came out, because the fusion is is a, <laughs> it's a, uh, I'm sorry if any of the developers are accidentally watching this. Like fusion, fusion is a bastard child of inventor. Okay. Uh, they they took, uh, as far as I understand, they took inventor and made it a lot simpler mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
a lot uh, more accessible for people. Mm -hmm. So that's when I picked it up. Um, I was going to make a point that, as you can see, like when we take the fillet and drive it past a certain point, like it starts to bend right yeah. here, yeah. like make the elongate. And that's funny enough, that's exactly what we see in areas like this. Yeah. So you can only know about this once you have seen this and you have accidentally discovered this is when you connect two things together and like you realize oh that's that's how to achieve that shape yeah. so sometimes you it's impossible to think about it like beforehand it, it's 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 only possible when you actually make those mistakes or whatever you know what i mean like it yeah. actually takes like serious practice yeah and um and that's my point like saying instead of just um thinking too much about it just go ahead and like go ahead and make a lot of mistakes and and do it and, and work with fusion and you will discover a lot more by trying stuff so we made this far more detailed than it needs to be but whatever um and it's then good. this this thing connects to this bone here spur like spur looking thing we're gonna use uh sketch i'm gonna it's something i rarely do but i'll do it right now i'm gonna do like some construction first basically i'm not just gonna go ahead and draw i'm gonna try and construct a more or less like proper sketch if if it's on the way we can always Actually, we can just always turn off all the bodies, um, <clears throat> and um, uh, people in the chat. If you have, you know, if there's any question that comes up about what Carol is doing, feel free to to ask them, or or if you have any questions related to hard surface or, or fusion just just post them in and we'll tackle them uh, sometime during the stream mm, yep yep so it's how I want it to look um, this part is gonna fuse with the existing one so we're not gonna worry about it but this one we can add a little more I'm also like a fan of making it look slightly like add just a little more design than it, it there is uh, in that thing in the reference yeah um so we're just gonna make it unnecessary and un, like unnecessarily more complicated just have a little cut out here uh, you know like People also, it's like my, my pet peeves, uh, people like to add a lot of uh, shapes that lighten construction, like cutting out stuff like this. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I'm doing, actually. Uh, but it's mostly just for the look, because that part is, in reality, is so tiny that adding that thing doesn't do anything. Like, it didn't, like, it, it's a lot of, work to create this opening in the detail mm -hmm. uh but in reality it has like it doesn't serve any purpose it it made your construction lighter by a fraction of a gram or like or, or a I fraction see. of a fraction of a yeah gram. so make plus you just added like uh another part where like dust and, and dirt will get into so in reality those things are like you only add this where you need to add them but but because we're like little visual artists we add this because it looks a little better than uh than just solid part um so what's interesting is i like to solve uh stuff like this here as you can see like if it was to rotate it would intersect yeah with the existing body so we're gonna move this out uh, but let's say we actually need this to be here. Um, 
but we, we, we have all this metal in there. So what we're going to do is I want to create some space. Uh, I see. So that so it doesn't intersect. I will cut this off and um, I will create, let's say, a bit of a like a reinforcement on the other side. Gotcha. And this this also will drive uh, the the shape of this like spur thing. Um, I just probably ended here. So we're gonna take that and make the cut. Uh, we're only cutting. Body number seven. Right? Seven? No. There's more. Um, I didn't cut the right thing. Let's hide things we don't need. If you don't see it, it's not going to cut it. Oh, and also we didn't join these things, which we should have done because there's no point of leaving them uh, as separate uh, bodies. I don't know if it's going to if it's going to join or not. Yeah, it does. Okay. Because I was afraid they're not touching. Okay, so now we can just turn off this and this and only cut this thing. Uh, two sides, so it's like cutting all the way through. So this is like the result that we're, that we want plus Uh, the sketch got turned off because we used it. Um, gonna create that. Just like here. This is sometimes, and this one we're not gonna cover the join. This is sometimes how you get to slightly more complicated shapes. Um, turn off the counts for now. Um, it's just complication comes out of necessity, usually, like normally. Mm -hmm. uh, like there was no other reason to make the shape like that, um, and and so here um, it would be ideal to just blend everything in. Um, also, like. Fillets have very particular um, role in like why why they even exist on the, in the design um, because I think like this is this is gonna be an Easter egg like uh, go watch Mike Hill's uh, class on design and you'll understand what I mean by it, like why fillets are important like why rounded things have less stress than ninety degree angles. Uh, so that's like your homework. Um, we have this piece that we don't really need in this whole design, and that's another uh, opportunity to show fusion magic. We're just going to select these three faces and press delete, and hopefully it's going to be able to calculate. Maybe not. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to go one by one. Let's see. Yeah, if you if you guys haven't watched um, the Mike Hill's presentation that Kirill is referring to, you should actually go and watch any presentation Mike Hill has ever done in his life, regardless of the topic, because he's he's a beast. I agree. Is it still calculating? I can't tell. It doesn't. See I think I broke Fusion actually. 
it's it's so funny. It's it's not responding to. <laughs> okay. Well, no magic for you. Nor normally, what's happening is I can just take a face and. Yeah. Wow. I totally broke it. Because you would delete the face and it would calculate the shape yeah. without it and re re sort of retopo everything uh, properly. Exactly. As you can see, it doesn't even drop the selection right now. So we got it broken. Let me save this real quick. Oh, perfect. It doesn't even want to type. Is that my problem? My keyboard. Um, it stopped. What? What's happening? It's called a live stream. Um. Yeah. That's <laughs> like you. You have problems you've never had in your life. <laughs> but hey, here's a trick when your keyboard doesn't work. Yeah, you copy paste whatever text you can. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what I do. Crazy tricks for days. <laughs> and now my, my keyboard started working. Great. See, like, see, see what's happening? Like, something you can select, is... but you can't drop it. Yeah, I feel like maybe my shift on the keyboard is in or something. But well, we're going to... It might just be a, the software. Like, that happens to me sometimes. So you might just need to re reload. Um in the meantime oh yeah my shift is stuck wow oh it is mm -hmm. oh wow i guess yeah un uh, unplug your your thing in i guess um but anyway raja is asking uh in the meantime like when yeah. when you're freelancing uh with clients um what do they generally ask as a del deliverable? Do you send them an OBJ, like a 3D model, or like when, when you're doing concept art work? Um, it's usually... Uh, it's usually geometry that's... It well, depends. If the client wants to have uh, like a CAD file, mm -hmm. they can then the deliverable is cat file yeah if the client is in the industry of like gaming and stuff mm -hmm. they they don't have use for cat files so they uh they get uh, uh what's it called uh triangulated mesh that they can use for baking yeah 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 let's see so yeah Mm, that's not it. Oh, I accidentally selected two. Okay. I wonder if your shift is still going. Yeah. Wow. There's. That's so weird. If you need to refresh or log out, just let's just do it. Um, no. If you no, think they'll save it. Seems seems like it's working. Let's let's try this again. Okay, there we go. See how I'll, I'll just control C back. I had this weird like cut that sometimes you don't know how to fix. So you just select. If one face doesn't work, you can try another face and just press delete. And it won't be there. It gets rid of unnecessary cuts and it's not always able to compute, but sometimes it can. See, like this one, it cannot compute. This one, it did. Okay. So, but it, it deleted like my bump. So, what I'm gonna do is just fillet this or fill it in like that. And I'm just gonna make a transition here. If all, all these things are absolutely unnecessary in this design. I mean, the point is I'm trying to like corner myself into some problems so I can show more, basically. Gotcha. Um, 
Now we can... I don't know if we can find this. There we go. So it's like a bunch of stuff, but you can see that it's a little more complicated and, and we're gonna make it even more interesting by cutting into this like that. Wrong face. Hmm. Okay. Well, that part I'm not worried about. That's I took the fillet too far. Let's keep it like that. It's gonna like you all all that matters is it's how it's gonna look yeah. at the end of the day. So uh, we have this. It's gonna now we can move it back into place. Uh oh apparently I've got I don't know if I cut too much. Like that. And then at that pivot point that it's using in there. See, like, even if I don't see the face. Yeah, it, 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 as soon as you see the circle, you know that you're well centered. Mm hmm. Exactly. Okay, so that's almost like exactly how this will mechanically work and then sometimes it's actually good to check because even with this joint it has like certain range of motion um we're gonna take this uh this body move oops move uh set the pivot point to the actual pivot point of the joint right here mm -hmm. as you can see and we're gonna check the range of motion so like so that it See my this cut that we worked on. Yeah, it avoids doesn't, friction. Mm -hmm, doesn't intersect anywhere, and but you you probably don't even need that range. You just need like this thing probably moves like this, just in and out a little bit, like forty five degrees or whatever. So that's uh, that's convenient to have to be able to rotate this into place later and it, like make sure it, like it's mechanically sound. Um, it's also gonna have some sort of connection there, I'm sure. Like this fillet, like you will never see it in the render or this chamfer. I'm, I'm positive, but it's good to have it there. You never know. Maybe because maybe later. I will be able to reuse this part on some other design, mm -hmm. and and maybe in other design it will be visible. At least that's how I justify like overworking the detail, which is it's absolutely not necessary. Okay, so we let's take a look at the canvas. Let's, let's like speed this up a little bit. So basically, we just need to kind of have like this thing move um, and have another cylinder if this is 90 degrees perpendicular we can just type in 90 um, I'm gonna go like that move it there once you've connected bodies, um, is it possible? You cannot disconnect. You cannot disconnect. That was my question. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you you basically like fused metal together. Yeah. So it and it really mimics like real life, pretty much. Yeah, you can cut them away. Yeah. By certain like separation lines, but that's it's well. I mean, let's let's show you how it's different from real life. So once I'm connecting the bodies like this, 
uh, there's like no operation to say disconnect because it doesn't understand like where would it stop now. Uh -huh. But if I go back and I turned off the design history, but uh, normally I have it turned on. Mm -hmm. Design history is like saving all your states of uh, operations. So if you have your design history on and you go ahead and merge two bodies, say join and then you started doing the operation fill it here and there let's say okay now they are connected but you said oh shit like i actually want them disconnected you can see that this this was the operation that connected them this was the operation that made the fillet mm -hmm. so we can go back and edit feature not always but most of the time yeah and instead of the join operation would be, uh, I guess not even this, you can just delete this and it will dissolve this feature. Gotcha. See, because the fillet now doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, so we can, let, let's say we did this and then we worked for like 10 minutes on something else. We can still go back to this in the timeline. That's what the timeline is for. Gotcha. Uh, if you're like, oh shit, like I, I should have disconnected it, but then normally you, you just it's it's sometimes it's just easier to redo it because if if you have a design that the, the timeline it takes you back, back back to the dinosaurs, like it's it's really not worth going that far in time. You you will fuck up the whole design. Gotcha. Um. So we'll leave it be as, as it is right now here. And we're just going to extend uh, this. Just giving you um, a check on time. It's 2 p.m. Um, OK. So uh, I, I don't know if we can get to a milestone in the design and, and... Sure. Uh, let's let's fi let's finish the connection here real quick. Okay. Because I was explaining like a lot of other stuff, uh, and then we'll have this one joint, which means automatically we have two legs basically. Sounds good. Like we'll, I guess next time we can just address the rest of the joints and then the bodies. But I mean, clearly, we we if if I don't explain it, I think my estimate for this shape would be like maybe four or five hours um if uh, if i'm explaining it it might take longer yeah for sure anyway uh, let's do let's just add uh, more shapes a little faster without thinking too much about it i mean that's usually the problem like adding more shapes without thinking about them yeah like you when you work you it, it's good to have things figured out and working properly this is so tiny in real life it's crazy like un unless you start 3d printing you never realize like what you're working on in, in actual dimensions i was working on a on a toy uh, like a desk toy and and finish the design and everything that was that was uh when i was starting and and got to the point where everything was done i rendered it and i was happy with the looks and i started sort of shopping for 3d print shops to have it printed uh -huh. and realized the thing was like a meter and a half in length and height you know yeah <laughs> it's like there's no way in hell you're printing this yeah, things things happen like that. You know. But I mean you can scale and stuff. Yeah, but... you can scale it, but it's the same thing as, as you were mentioning here, like because we're already in such a small scale, uh, mm -hmm. almost like jewelry jewelry parts, like doing certain details don't make sense. And that sort of it's sort uh, of yeah. where what I did. Like I, I had details that were that were way too small. Mm -hmm. that once I rescaled it wouldn't make sense and, and things like that. Yeah, so it's that's why it's important to work with a scale that, yeah, exactly. that's correct right away. Most definitely. Um, 
Guys, we're going to blitz through your questions um, towards the end of the stream. Uh, and and uh, again, we have Andreas who will join us in, in a little bit uh, to sort of go over, over his homework. He's one of the first students who uploaded uh, their work for the course, and he did a pretty sweet job. There you go. We're almost done with this. Like when I'm not explaining, I'm working a lot faster. It looks great, though, man. I love I love the um, sort of almost like OpenGL shading you get in Fusion. Mm. Yeah, you can also like um, adjust it and change it because this is just a like satin steel material. Yeah, you you can make it look like plastic. Look look at flat shaded, uh, like whatever really. So that that's uh, that's good. Yeah. Um, let me add like one last touch because this is pretty much done. Because um, in reality, like we've taken it as close to the real deal as possible. I think. Um, I just want to add two screws um, here. <laughs> So we're going to again just make a screw real quick, or at least something that resembles it. It doesn't have to be. Like in reality, you don't even need to do this. That's, that's far too detailed for like practical purposes. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can just leave it like without details at all and you'll be fine. Sometimes when it doesn't matter what kind of screw it, I just do like a cylindrical opening and that's it. Because you will never see that. Um, just, uh, I don't have to like use symmetry for this because at a certain, see like it's exactly in the same spot because everything is measured. Mm -hmm. um, like I, but it doesn't like it doesn't mean that I never use symmetry, but. I don't use it where it's not necessary, basically. Um, before I fuse it together, I'm going to make copies so I can use that later. And uh, I'm going to blend this in. And I'm going to blend this more. Uh, the shape, the way it connects right here. Yeah, it's too thin. Is limiting how far I can bevel this. So before connecting, I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate them even more. And this will be the final touch for today before we answer the questions. So. Like, see, like this, this is automatically getting some of the shapes that uh, mimicking the design that we saw there. Yeah, it's, it's slightly more organic. So when you're smart about connecting two parts and filling them together, you will get that more organic look. And just maybe even like one last thing, as an example, uh, in terms of changing the uh, the getting like a slightly uh, more advanced shape, I guess. Um, I can just... Well, in reality, cuts look a lot more sci-fi than add-ons. Add so, um, I was gonna do... So, like, you just work in the primitives, and let's say just mechanically, engineers realize that this needs this bump here. Mm -hmm. to like stop something or, or or whatever maybe it needs to be like 
stick out that far and it go, goes that far in. Okay. So I was going to say the benefit benefit of these like bevels is in 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 blending it, it helps you change the shape and just have it slightly more unconventional right because it, it's not just a cylinder anymore it's it's more and it's especially not clear how you got to that shape when you start blending this like like so Where was that point? Oh, cut that. Let's move it's five. No. One, two. That's when, like, because it's so small, yeah. uh, dragging this thing is not as good as just typing in the number. So this, fill it here and here. See if it even does it. It doesn't want to do it, I guess. Okay. And then fill it here. And um, fill it here. So that's like pretty much the power of fillets, right? You you get a slightly different shape that starts to look. If if I showed you this, it would be harder to guess how I came to this like transition. Yeah. Uh, plus, sometimes what's interesting is these lines drive your further design, as you can see, because they are very uh, logical, like how things connect and stuff. So later you can use them as your guides for adding. Uh, more more cuts and more design changes like this like it, it tells me that this would be a logical uh cut to have here or like if if we add if we needed a cut it, it's basically where i would edit i'm just using these construction lines the, the lines that help construct topology i'm using them as guides for my design ideas that's like it's a topic in its own mm -hmm. to be honest but i just wanted to touch on it real quick so here's what happened i used that cut yeah and, and like to make a an additional separation line or whatever gotcha but this one, at least, it, it looks like it belongs here, just based on existing. Because, again, to explain, if I, this is just the visual style, if I do shade it, it's not very obvious, like, where those lines are. Mm -hmm. But but this is something that was instructed by that line that is not visually present, but this is became part of the design. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll definitely get back to this. Uh, let's um, take a look at the homework and answer questions and stuff. Yeah, it looks tight, man. It's and and I know this like you've been answering questions and and chatting and explaining at the same time, but definitely like we can we can see the speed of the software because this is exactly the same workflow I use in Modo but every now and then and i'd say perhaps 30 to to 60 time per, percent of the time i have once i do my cut i need to go and fix the mesh mm -hmm. because it always messes it up and then when you need to do like anytime you do a fillet or whatever it just becomes like everything goes a wall um which you don't have to deal with when you're working in cad uh yeah basically you just you re you worry about topology later because all these cuts they 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 influence design and stuff and topology um you just 
you you're solving design right now. You're yeah. not so you're not worrying about topology. That's, exactly. that's the benefit. Exactly. All right. So let me go on Skype. I'm just gonna add. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, Andres. Andres, I believe you're on the call. If you can just uh, unmute yourself and join us. Hello. Hey, what's up, yes. man? Yes, what's up? What's up, good? How are you? Good, Very good, good. good. Um, awesome. Thanks for inviting me, by the way. It's an honor. Huh. Man, you, you, you had your homeworks, I think, what, the next day or, or a couple of days right after the course was out? Uh, yeah, I, think... I actually purchased... I purchased the course right after it came out, like the minute it came out, I just got it <laughs> and started working on it after the stream ended. <laughs> That's awesome, nice. man. Uh, let me just, I'm just going to go uh, and pull it up. I don't know if, uh, let me see. Actually, I'm going to send you the link Kirill, and you can, uh -huh. I'll just send you the link. That way you can sort of look at it Sure. from your screen. Let me just, okay, just sent it to you. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, we've seen. I've seen that. Uh, on, well, I haven't seen this binoculars thing, but we talked about this on Instagram. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did. Is, we, we started chatting through Instagram for this because I saw the post. Um, I think that first of all, it looks fucking amazing. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've seen these two breakdowns before, and that's why I mentioned the breakdowns in the first place in the beginning, like. Um, a good example is even if you're not right about something in this analysis initially, it mm. doesn't matter that you're not right because no, no, because you you you've gone through the process of thinking about it and you can problem solve it later. I exactly. Yeah. Plus, not only that, but like there's so many ways to go about stuff. Like for example, like this, like it can be slot sketch, it can be two circles and the connecting them, you know, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. so many ways to, yeah. I think, um, back in like a couple, a couple of like years back when Fusion was starting, they posted a video saying there's like more than eight ways to create a cube in Fusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think six, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I, I'm sure like there's, there's more than that. There is, there yeah. is so, so many ways to do everything. Yeah. I mean, even without projections, for example, which is a big thing, Mm -hmm. uh, you can do so much things just by extruding from uh, from faces and objects, which is crazy in my opinion. I don't know. Like I personally don't even use projection at all. Yeah. Like I, I, I use like for this type of shape, I can just use a rectangle and cut with it. Yeah, I did, I did the same actually. I didn't use projection. Mm -hmm. See, like so, like you're when you were thinking about it, like you said, oh maybe it's a projection, but then mm -hmm. in reality you use something else, so. Yeah. In your in your mind, you stored already like two uh, mm. variants or like two options yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, Actually, to, to be honest, the hardest part about this one, the the this one, yeah, uh, was I think the transition between the the double chamfered part and the rounded part. Yeah. Mm. That that was really hard to get right. Like this thing. It, I I mean. Uh, making the transition correct, I mean, the, the, the part that's over, um, that's uh, like hiding the, the seam, for example, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's not a problem. The problem was lining, I guess, mm -hmm. the, the circular part with mm -hmm. uh, the chamfered part, so it doesn't look ugly and like... Right, wrong. right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's usually, like, that's, that was a nice touch right here, like you added a fillet that makes it blend together well. That's, that's usually a way to go. Um, I mean, overall, like, I don't have any problems with any of this. And, and I think this is definitely my favorite. Mm. Uh, like, yeah, it took the longest to model as well, I think. How long did it take? Oh, man, I, from start to finish, I think it was like 10 hours. Oh, wow, like, okay. 
uh, with the renders and the Photoshop and everything. Mm -hmm. The last night, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Took took but some time. Yeah, but like that's that's still like such a good piece to have. Like ten hours is nothing. To, like mm -hmm. seriously, you know, in terms of having some good piece to show in your portfolio, that's nothing. Yeah, 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 that's for in sure. one day. Yeah, and you can yeah, yeah, yeah. you can knock these out like. In, uh, like if this is ten hours, imagine what would be like two weeks of work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have some pretty huge models. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I have some experience with Fusion before the class, mm -hmm. and it's like what I like about the software is that I never get tired. In it. I mean, I can work in Fusion for sixteen hours straight. I don't mm -hmm. care. It's fine. It's fun. Uh, yeah, unless it starts giving you a headache <laughs> like, somewhere. Yeah. But because yeah, yeah, yeah. like I I normally like I I totally agree because again I think the the main reason is that you don't think about topology you don't look at mm -hmm. problems you you look at uh, design all day like what how mm -hmm. to make this more interesting and whatnot and and it looks it's it's rewarding for sure like this this is such a nice piece I I love it thank you man what what's interesting is my my first model in ZBrush was the binoculars like this, like the night vision goggles. Mm. Uh, I wonder if it's... Is it on my art station or not? Uh, if not, it's like somewhere in my folder. Uh, I haven't actually touched ZBrush that much and I need to learn that. <laughs> Like, look, this is this is such a like piece of shit compared to <laughs> what you just showed me. Like, look how detailed this is, and and look at this. I mean, like, yeah. like, granted, this was like a week into ZBrush or whatever, mm -hmm. but but still, look yeah, at I this. I mean, it's fusion. Yeah. You, you can't compare the two in 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 details. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's 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 nice. It's it's also something you can always keep as uh, like for later, you know, like for your characters. That's yeah. that's that's how I like to work. If I, if I'm just practicing or I have nothing to do or whatever, like you, I don't know what to model. Always model something you can use later. So it's, yeah, I mean the, the the nice thing with Fusion and the way the booleans work is that uh, you can just go and visit any model you've made in the past. Mm -hmm. Cut a part of it and use it as a as a thing to copy and paste here and there. Yeah, exactly. It's, no it, it's it's good to have that like mindset for sure. I also like uh, I don't know if that was in the reference or not, but like mm -hmm. the way this top connects to yeah. the bottom here, like with this little cut, it's such a nice touch. It looks yeah, so realistic. I, I think I think it was like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah or at least pretty close. Yeah, like this separation line, it's mm. so believable. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, like the, the only That's way. That's actually most, mostly texturing, to be honest, because uh, it's not separated. Uh, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a fillet. Uh -huh. And uh, just because of the dirt shader, it made some separation lines in the. Uh, okay. The I mean. Bottom. I mean, in reality, uh, it's yeah. it's not hard to do in Fusion either. It's just mm. sometimes good ideas come like on the texturing um, mm. stage. Uh, the only thing, maybe, because like exactly how I was showing it here with like blending and stuff in terms of fillings, mm. I would probably like take this and blend this in slightly. Yeah, so it was just... breaking. It was breaking. It is okay. filleted just a bit. But I yeah, see. it was breaking if I if I pulled it farther further. Yeah. Yeah, there's like ways to sometimes uh, when when you have to do something. Um, I I want to get rid of that cut real quick. Oh, by the way, I have something to show you in Fusion later uh, uh -huh. if you have the time. Sure. Uh, it's about navigation because I see you using the cube and and it's making me go crazy because oh. there's a far easier way. Are you are you talking about shift and middle mouse? Yeah, man. Ah, you should yeah. know it. Yeah, of it doesn't help you. No, the the way I work is just convenient for me. Oh. Uh, yeah. Just because I I work in like three quarters always, and ah uh, well, uh, I work the same way kind of, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's I seems useful it. to to pivot from uh, from like ah oh you're doing that way. No, what I'm actually talking about is that 
if you shift and middle click, just click once at mm -hmm. some point, you set your pivot point at that, at that place. Yeah. So you can pivot from that point instead of the center of the canvas. Yeah, like this. That's pretty useful. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it really depends. I'm just, I think it's just a matter of, it, like, like you said, there's uh, six ways to make a cube. There's like, mm. you can do whatever in terms of navigation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if, in terms of setting pivot points, it's useful. Um, so yeah, uh, the this homework is definitely definitely uh, an A plus, especially Ooh, espe especially the fact that you took it uh, to Octane. Yeah. Um, we we had this conversation actually on Instagram uh, with uh, C K Bang uh, earlier because he started using uh, Octane. He started learning, mm -hmm. and I asked him like if he knows any good tutorials. Do you know any good tutorials for Octane? Um, in life thrill has some cool ones. He has some subsurface stuff, and he's uh, now he's uh, in the process of making another one, which is for uh, like importing substances and using them with Octane, which is probably gonna be really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Raphael is actually really really cool. Uh, did, did you have any problems in terms of? Uh, I mean, clearly you didn't have to UV this, right? Because it's all like Obviously one shader. Not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would yeah, be yeah, a yeah. pain in the ass. But yeah. um, I think with hard surface, it's even it works with Octane personally. I think because all of this can be separate, right? Like separate yeah. bodies, and you they don't are. have to. Yeah, yeah, like you can see, like this is a different shader from this, from that. Yeah. So you don't really have to UV because they're separate meshes. Yeah, and, in and Octane with, actually, there's uh, also triplanar which can do crazy stuff. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, same as Keyshot, I guess. So it's, yeah, it's okay. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're gonna look at this in a second. But yeah, basically, um, that that's the beauty of uh, uh, fusion. I wanted to say that you can take take this in fusion and uh, like pre-assign a different uh, shader to just another, just the face. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, for example, I can take this face and say appearance, and do like uh, faces. Yeah, you haven't downloaded that one. Oh yeah, yeah, it's right. <laughs> so, mm. when you do this, some software, uh, sometimes software recognizes this. No, uh, it doesn't though. Moi doesn't, but Keyshot mm -hmm. can understand this, uh, if, especially if you use the this plugin. So mm -hmm. you can get something more out of just this topology. Yeah. Um, plus, Keyshot by itself can separate it by by uh, degrees of the of the phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like of the normals. You mm -hmm. can separate it by normals. So I'm sure Octane can do the same. So UV is with you with just select faces, I guess. But, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, basically, uh, UVs are not that relevant with hard surface. Yeah, yeah. It's mostly one material per part. Yeah, yeah. Except if you want to do substance designer stuff, and another substance designer, sometimes substance painter, mm -hmm. which is really cool, a really cool tool. Um, I, I haven't seen like a good workflow between Fusion and Substance Painter yet. But, really? Uh, Everybody's telling me that uh, Unwrap 3D, you just throw your Fusion model in that, and you're like done in three seconds with the UVs, and then just um, throw it into into Painter, and it works. Yes and no. Like those UVs are not really usable because it's not quad mesh, right? Uh, yeah. Because it like it sure like it will unwrap it into like a million triangles. Yeah. Um, and then oh, uh, you, you, you do triangles, huh? I I I usually do uh, what's it called uh, angons. And uh, uh, then uh, if uh, I need uh, to cut them, I do. Like you actually yeah. have a moi? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it breaks way less stuff. And mm. also what I found out is that uh, not saving in IGS and saving in SAT is actually mm -hmm. better sometimes. Because uh, IGS files in moi sometimes break and give mm -hmm. you issues. And SAT is usually done. That's SAT or STP? Yeah, SAT. SAT. Oh, okay, I've never used that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I usually do IGS instead. 
Uh, yeah, I had some problems once and just mm -hmm. tried different files and uh, some worked, some didn't. And the CT was one of the better ones. Same for me, depending on the curvature of the mm. mesh, it can yeah. be something else. Yeah. Anyways, well, it's, uh, it's difficulty with the second time with the second type of uh, chamfer uh, fillets. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, you only find that out like as you keep working and like yeah. you know very particular problems basically. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's so let's uh, answer quickly like a yeah. couple of questions and wrap this up so we can continue next time. Um. And you were asking for for uh, octane. Yeah. The yeah. Octane is in life thrill in life thrills like he thrill. mo like he has one of the best uh tutorials but if you also look at uh chad ashley from grayscale gorilla or even uh -huh. there's a previous stream ash had with uh rafael rao um mm -hmm. ah, like, that's, that's silver wing that's what i was talking about yeah before. silver wing all three of them are pretty good but this is a great one to get started ash ash and a few of them uh, use this tutorial to actually um, start using uh, Octane. Um, uh, all right, let's. Is it is it standalone though? Like, I mean, I know there's standalone Octane. Are they tutorials about standalone or specifically Cinema for Geo? Like, is, is there a difference? I don't think there's a difference between both. Yeah, me neither. Like, it's the I same. It's Whether you have it in in as a plugin or in standalone, the the workflow is the same. Right. Okay um and people in the chat if you have better tutorial suggestions for Kirill, just post them and i'll i'll forward them to him uh yep. question times uh andreas thank you so much man that like you know you killed it homework was tight um you and you thank and you. Kirill definitely have... working on it yeah i mean you got your feedback right yeah um but but yeah if uh you guys already started a conversation on Instagram, uh, and if you have some of those tips, you know, you you want to share with Kirill, definitely, definitely send them his way. Yeah, man, of course. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much for, for jumping in. Thank you. Have Thanks, a nice dude. time. You too. All see right. You, see you forward. around. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. Ciao. Um, let's blitz through questions very quickly. I'm just scrolling through. Uh, so we've answered this one. Um, so yeah, scene CGI. Yes, Mike Hill, the link you sent, uh, that's the person who, uh, Kirill was referring to. Um, and again, uh, I recommend to everyone to go and watch Mike Hill's presentations at um what was it uh i forgot where it Indus was industry uh, workshops mm -hmm. in london just watch both of them uh such a pleasure to yeah, watch yeah yeah it's uh it's super informative um -da 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 -da. one of my teachers created a Maya script to decimate the mesh from Fusion to use in ZBrush. I'm sure the script is available online. His name is Isaac mm -hmm. Oster. Uh, you can just save out OBJ and STL and ZBrush can read that. Okay. Uh, it, it comes through as a uh, triangulated mesh. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, there's no, I, I'm not exactly sure what script is doing. Maybe it's like uh if, if it was created clearly like it's super useful but i'm just saying even without the script you can try this today like you can just export as stl okay and and you'll get it if, if fusion gets out topology that's understand it by any software it's just it's not like quad topology that's yeah. the only thing yeah 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 um and in the course you you do show how to sort of optimize your mesh using uh you show the workflow in both fusion and uh moment of inspiration in moi correct yeah yep um pixels asking uh so he's thinking of purchasing the course but is wondering what's the difference between uh this course and your old hard surface class i don't know pixel in like for which um, other platform you're referring to but 
um in terms of what's covered again you can watch the the trailer but kirill what's the difference between this course and your old hard surface course uh well ba basically um i i answered this question like yeah, in last detail time. uh in the yeah in the previous one but just to repeat myself the difference is last my the course from gumroad my personal one uh is uh about a year old maybe a year and a half or so mm -hmm. so um it's it's slightly old in terms of how i work and uh my perception of the software yeah plus that course is very basic it just gives you ui and modeling a quick thing like i have on the screen now mm -hmm. even like much simpler than this uh and that's it uh, and it's also like much less in terms of like it doesn't cost anything on Gumroad. Uh, and then if you're referring to uh, Mold 3D, Mold 3D was even older. And um, even though like I, I show building like I show building this model right here, like a huge uh, cat uh, vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, it's also just older UI because UI changed. Uh, Fusion like just it's it's two years old. Uh, yeah. It's not only it's old, it's completely different. If you want to see like a vehicle model, maybe you're better off with that uh, course. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't matter like what what we're modeling. You're not if you're after the demo, just you know how to do it. Um, it's not gonna be very beneficial. What you should be after is uh, the reasoning, the explanation for like the tools and stuff. So in that in that aspect, this course, the most recent course is always much much better. Yeah. Uh, you know, like it doesn't matter if I model like a joint or if I model a gun. Uh, it's just you know, it's just, just the the tools to explain the design and the software. Yeah, from Pixel, from what you you explained during the the launch stream was pretty much um, that this course. The, the Learn Squared course is more focused on design and how to approach uh, the design side of things more than the technical uh, UI side of things. Right. Um, and I believe, uh, let me see, do, you, do any of you get glitches with Fusion live presentation in a web browser having more complex models? I'm sure there are a bunch, but I never use that. Yeah. So I, I can't really answer that. I, um, I don't use the, the browser version. So. Yeah. And, and, uh, FH concepts, uh, yes, fusion assets need to be retopoed to be game ready. Um, and again, I think, uh, a moment of, of inspiration, Moy and, and, uh, fusion, th um, sorry, ZBrush are ways to go about that. Mm -hmm. and that's it that's a wrap great okay so if uh, let's just say if you were interested in in this particular model like if you want to see this done uh, let, let us know somehow right and uh, like just comment on like learn squared Facebook or whatever so so I understand that like yeah let's finish this or yeah. if this was not that interesting, then uh, we won't do it. <laughs> yeah, just just uh, you know, in the next ten seconds, just just let us know. We can take this like from now to a finished model that would then be brought into Keyshot and rendered, or we can move to something else um, in the next stream. If you guys, yeah. Okay. So so far. I have no problem ditching this. <laughs> yeah, every everyone at this point is just saying do it. Okay. Uh, so we'll just wait another ten seconds, but but yeah, I, I think people want to see the whole process. The, well, yeah. Um, um, more than likely, I'll work on it off screen a little bit. Yeah, just, just so to push can, it for forward a little bit. Yeah, because in terms of hours put in, like the more you put in, the better. Yeah. So next time we'll get much, like much further. <laughs> I think this was like this was pretty decent for yeah. for, for an hour. Pixel Pixel says Carol's wants to ditch it. <laughs>
yeah no but it's cool uh yeah so we'll we'll do that um all right it's a wrap people have a have a good end of the day or or um and good start of the week and again we'll see you next week for another stream um yeah that's pretty much it sounds good, good. One. thank you so yeah. much kirill you're welcome and buy the course go and check out the course if it, this is something you you're interested in uh check out the trailer check out the course and let me see if uh i'll just repost the link very quickly before we sign yep. out and uh yeah if you have any questions just hit us up on facebook and we'll get back to you all right have a good one people ciao all right later do, 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 do. We